Welcome, everybody. Um, just to repeat, this is um, uh, informational review training for implementing software tests online. It's not really going to go into what's inside the reading goals and math goals test or the uh, ESL test, but it will help hopefully to get you a little more familiar with um, actually getting the test. So if you have questions, you can put those into the chat and Pandalea at USDE will make sure that I get those questions. I'm going to go through the new um, module that CASAS has put forth for module two for e-test. We're going to go through some of it fairly rapidly because you probably have seen that in your basic implementation, which most of you should have done. If you haven't done that, then you will be seeing it more. So, share my screen. Is that working, Pamela? Can everybody see? Yes. All right, let's go ahead. Okay. So, um, this isn't really super applicable. You've seen this if you've done that, the training. But this is, um, this is a checklist or the agenda for what we're kind of going to look at today. And uh, depending on what you need, we'll go into some of these a little more in depth. Um, I would like to say that you are going to be getting more questions as you're actually doing the testing. And we'll, of course, set up another webinar to, to if we need one. And I'll also show you where you can go to CASA's website to find information that you may need to um, answer your individual questions as they come up. Um, implementation is something to take seriously. Um, can be a little bit difficult, but um, hold on, hold on, Doris. There are a couple saying that they are not getting your audio. So let me welcome you again to this review of software implementation. Just to let you know that we will not be going into tests themselves in detail, but rather implementing e tests. Um, and we will be reviewing what most of you have had a chance to look at in the basic information and then further um, looking at that because we have questions um, and I'll give you information about contacts and process for specific information. And um, if we need to, we can have another webinar later in, as we can actually get going on the topic. So if you can see our agenda here, um, first is the checklist for going live. Um, the second is training requirements, which I'm gonna have you kind of uh, look at together on that. Main point of contact and data manager, um, e-test coordinator and proctor, their responsibility, online setup and access, intake screening, we'll look at that just a little bit, Pre and post test um, and generating reports. So, um, you need to make sure you have what's necessary, and hopefully, some of you have done that, and you can do that by going to process and looking those over. Um, first, before you can really do anything, you've got to do these trainings that are in number two. Um, the basic implementation and module two process e test implementation. Those may not be in module one and two the way they look right here on the screen, may not be available quite yet. Process is has just um, started to see new module system. So um, if you've taken the basic implementation training, then you're in good shape. Um, you will need to do, the, the person that's in charge will need to do an agency agreement 
And then, of course, you need to decide who's going to be coordinators, crossers, and we'll talk a little bit about more about that. Once that's all done, you can actually order them. Some of you may already be. And then you email. Um, if your agency has not used CASAS before, um, the first time for CASAS, we've been using it for ESL in the past, you need to email to go live to get set up. Um, then you're going to connect to your online account, add sites if you wish to. You can have as few or as many sites as you like, users, um, register testing stations. We'll talk more about each of these. Review testing stations, conduct a trial run, which I highly recommend, and then go live. Uh, in the end, retreat. So there are two ways that um, we've got the e-test there on the left-hand screen. This is where you actually go to administer your test. And um, we'll show you how to get to that. Then the other is Top Pro. Um, you can purchase either uh, Top Pro comes, the basic comes with your e-test. If you want to go deeper with reports, you can purchase that so in hand. But this is where you're actually going to go to review all of the case testing data that accumulates. Um, okay, so um, here you can see a comparison. We have um, the e tests are right there and they can be um, accessed to the desktop or laptop and areas. Um the same with top so down you see orange looking at the TV, um you can install that uh, and you have to look at your data. And anyone can do that. At, uh, okay. okay. So, step two. Um, these are the certifications that you have to have. Um, let's go down to the third one. And that is you need to have an implementation agreement. Um, and then the coordinator and and crocs or certifications. Uh, hopefully you've already done what is on the website as basic implementation training and it includes some of model two, which we're looking at today. Um, so that implementation agreement is just takes about 15 minutes and it is submitted by your program director, administrator, whoever's going to be in charge. Um, of the program and the testing, and that's your also the main point of contact with your agency. Um, and some of your smaller programs may have the same, the data manager and the main point of contact. We actually have that right now in our team. So decide what that's going to do. Okay, so. Um, e test coordinator certification um, and doctor certification. There are two separate principles that are required before you can start testing. And those take, as you can see, 30 to 45 minutes. And we'll talk a little bit more about each of them. Data manager is a pretty big deal. It manages everything to do with e test for the agency. Putting online account data, adding users, sites, features, and classes, and the manager's user access to the enterprise, and carefully your data manager. Um, they will be pretty much running everything from the background. Uh, you've, if you've taken the, the um, 
different trainings, and this will be familiar to you. Um, at our agency, we have a number of people that are both coordinators and doctors because they share responsibility. You can designate people to be both or separate them out as works best for your agency. Um, one of the first things you'll be doing is station registration, and that does take two certified trainers. So you've got to either have a proctor, coordinator, or, or any combination of that to do that. Um, they will customize your template to work for your agency and the state, select the testing station, uh, sessions for the program that you're going to be using, talk to a lot. Um, coordinate the trial run um, and also coordinate the ongoing testing, sometimes in multiple sites. The proctor is the one that actually runs the testing as it is happening. So a coordinator and a proctor can be the same person. You need to take both trainings if you're going to proctor um, and coordinate. So the proctor prepares the test, starts the test, opens the test, and adds stations, um, begins the test, et cetera. Um, these should be familiar to you if you've done these trainings already. Um, just down in number four is very important that after the test, everything is exited. The stations are all exited. And the um, proctor station where the test sessions are implemented needs to be exited out of every station removed and everything exited out of for test security. That's sometimes one that we get at the end of the test and forget to. Okay, once you've done all of that, yay, you can place your order. Um, and these are ways to do that. That, of course, is also on the website, which I'll show you at the end of our PowerPoint. Um, the third item here is very important. Be sure that as you're ordering materials that you do order a test administration manual one for each site. There's very important information in those, um, and you'll be using those a lot, especially if you're doing um, any type of pencil testing. This is a lot for e-testing, but paper pencil testing some of you are also doing if you're uh, working with sales or sites that don't have computers. So the TAM will be your best friend for the test administration. Um, so when you finish setting up, you've got those initial steps done, then that's when you send an email to go live. And that's when you're going to get your account information. Some of you may have already done that. And if you haven't done that yet, that could be something you want to do soon before you start administering, getting ready to administer those tasks, give yourself some time to get familiar. Um, they'll set up your account. They'll give you how many licenses you purchased. Um, they'll give you a site. You can then set up other sites and um, help them manage the users. And then they'll get back to you within two to three days. All right, so um, this is how it looks when you're getting ready to do your testing. So you open any browser and you enter the URL, which I'll show you in a few minutes, that one that goes for our agency, the global one. They have several that are dedicated to California. That's thousands and thousands of students. Um, and then I, at our, at our um, agency, we book that, mark that, so that it shows up every time our computer station um, comes up so we can easily get to it. And I'll show you later how to actually mark the test. 
not the test, but getting into the test. And then over on the other side, you can install PE Client, and that um, Cossus will give you all the information that you need to get into that. It's pretty intuitive, pretty easy to install that client, and that's where you can get all your data. Here is the global, as you can see right there, that's the website that you're going to be using. And you'll be putting information. Your agency will have a special number that everyone in the agency will use, no matter what site. And then you will have already logged in or created a um, with process if you've done your training, it should be the same one. They'll give you a temporary password, and it's pretty self explanatory how to do to do that. Um, once you are into your, this is how TE looks. So Enterprise has all a uh, ribbon across the top with different areas to get into. When you log into that, you will get a message telling you, you know, the default of 500, you're at 500, you need to start thinking about ordering more licenses. Um, you can change that to go as low as 50. So 500 might be annoying to have that if you don't have a big program. Um, So you can set up the number of sites that you want, and this is where you're going to be doing it. Um, is it top scope enterprise? And we have um, not done that for a long time, so I'd have to review that too. And I will show you how to do that or where to find that information and that type stuff. Okay. Um, so here is kind of a, a quick and dirty um, showing of how to add a new site. Um, you might want to, if you have a big program and several sites, that might be an easier way to manage the number of um, testers that you have. However, there are a lot of ways to filter that information on Top Pro. So if you have a smallish program, you may not want to have a lot of different sites. That you can experiment with that. Um, and I'll show you where you can uh, get a step by step guide to add sites rather than doing this here. Um, users, it's very important that you have everyone who is using uh, e testing results to have access to Top Pro. Enterprise, the one on the left. Um, you can limit so it's just a view only, but teachers need to be able to see how their students are doing in order to guide their instruction. So um, you can add any users, whether they are um, trained, certified through process or not. However, on that e test, access everyone who has access to that has to have a login and have certification, which you would have to, of course, be ready to show the state and process of base for that. So this is how it looks when you open Top Pro Enterprise. Um, and here is where you can look to add users. Again, I will show you where you can get a step-by-step -step easier than this to add your users rather than taking the time to do it now. Um, if you use uh, classes, they can help you along the way to help you add users, configure how you want them to look, or you can do it on your own. Um, so you might want to experiment with that if you run into problems. They will help you and they get back to you very quickly. This is just kind of a rundown of the rights that can be administered through Top Pro Enterprise. 
and limit or expand. And similar to what we're doing with the um, that you know, we have basic and teacher, and uh, you decide in your agency how you want to do that. And you may find that you need to add or eliminate access as you go along, just like you have done with Utopia. Doris, is yes. there a way that there, the question is, how do you get help? Is there a number to call? Yes, and I, I could get that right now. I was planning to give all that information at the end. I was going to take you to the CASAS website, which I think would be good. Um, to, and I'll show you the menu where you go to have the menu where all of, of the helps are and also the contact information. So it's, it's very easy to get to. You can download the step-by-step -step process at that site. Um, would you like me to do that now or just look at the end? I need to get out of the website, um, out of this PowerPoint to do that. It can wait until the end. Okay. So um, this, again, is a rundown. Um, of what each has access to. So your coordinator um, and your proctor, or as you can see, there is a position of coordinator proctor, which we use a lot. So um, that might just be easiest. So your coordinator can also proctor, et cetera. Um, it works especially well for most of our agencies, which are smaller than um, some of those huge giant ones that are in other states. Um, if you, this is a good point to right here. If you are an agency that has only one tester, only one member, um, you to register stations in order to test, you only have to register them once, but you need two people to do that. Um, CASAS will work with you on that and do the other registrants or the other uh, registered person, certified person to help with that. So uh, most of us have at least two, but there may be some where you don't have that option. If that's the case, CASAS will help you with that. So registering testing stations, we it's good to do this well ahead of the Day you're going to test. Um, uh, some of us have had a glitch or two as we're registering uh, stations and we've needed to contact office support to help us get those um, glitches solved or issues solved. So you're going to want to, if you're, if you're uh, doing a registration coming up July 15th or something like that, you're going to want to make sure that this is done ahead of time. So you're not uh, under the gun for that. And as they say, you just do that once. Um, it kind of looks like this. You will log in. Uh, either the proctor or the coordinator will log in. So it's pretty user friendly. You go in, you see the screen. And then um, the, another proctor or coordinator will confirm the registration. And that has to happen for all machines that you're going to use for testing. You're going to be assigned to a site or a room or a lab. Uh, you can assign them to a, a cart if you have one of those. So if you run into any problems with that, that works pretty really smoothly for us occasionally an issue here or there. Um, but that stops everything. So Make sure you give yourself plenty of time on that. Let's make sure I told you everything. Um, if you want to unregister, the machine coordinators are authorized to do that, and it does take only one person. If you are doing Chromebooks and uh, iPads, both require an installation of ePass Online app before you can register the station. So. Uh, if that's 
running into problems registering your Chromebook. That may be the problem. Okay, so um, these are actual templates. And you you can have Costas tell them they know what you've ordered, what you need, and they will add templates already um, configured to your agency account. And then you can replicate those to, to other sites. There is a step-by-step -step process for doing that. You may want to go in and um, and edit that. We will deal with that. So we edit for data collection. We don't want to have all of that demographic information that Utopia requires. It's also since that's federally required. Costs also has it. Some agencies. Top Pro is their utopia. Um, so they have everything there. So when a student comes in to test, they also may be coming in to register to pre test. And that's a lot of information. So you might want to edit that out. It takes quite a bit of time to do it. Just put in the information that you need. For ESL students, we recommend just doing their name, uh, gender, and uh, it's a bubble system for putting in the birthday. That can be really tough for you. So that might be a good one to have, though, for ABE and ASE. It's not as difficult, and it's another way to make sure you don't have duplication. So see if I've covered everything with that. Um, you, of course, are going to uh, talk to CASAS about implementing or or putting those templates in for you, and then we'll kind of go through the different areas of where you may want to make some uh, editing. Okay, so here's what the template does. It gives the program, and whether it's ABE, ASE, or ESL, it tells the modality what tests are going to be delivered in that with a pre-test. It's going to have the locator, Going to have um, all of the reading goals test if it's reading uh, modality. Going to have a locator for math and all of the possible math tests, and then uh, you will seamlessly move in. The student will seamlessly move into one of those tests. So that's going to be different than a perhaps a post test uh, where you don't need the locator anymore. Um, there are options on how to deliver it, how much. Uh, who's registering for it, the data collection I told you about, and layout screens, displays. We didn't mess with much of this, just the ones that we needed to change for, for our agency. So here's, here's how it looks. Um, when you open up uh, your testing, and you're a proctor and you're getting ready to start a test. Uh, this is uh, the session, the way the session looks after you've implemented or finished your template. You will, when you create the template, uh, when you edit it, you're gonna have to, or if you copy it, you're gonna have to push create, the button for create, you'll see that, that and there is a step-by-step -step process for that. Um, you can go in um, and start one of these sessions. That's what the proctor does. And this, so this is how the screen looks. Uh, requires and we have done the training. Process requires no more than 25 to a proctor. So if you have a big lab, you are going to have to have more than one proctor. I have a question, Therese. Yes. If a program is not planning to use electronic testing at this time, do they still need to set up an, an online account? No. Um, you, you, if, unless you are entering tests into Top Pro, which you do not need to do because you have Utopia. Um, 
then we don't need to do all of this setup. A lot of this is geared towards of what I'm talking about today is geared towards e test. Hello? But the only training you have to take training. You don't have to take uh, um, a coordinator training. That is only for e test. So, um, it is, is it pretty soon in the next two um, weeks, probably, I can email that date. There will be a module that you can do online that is expressly just for paper pencil, which are And But again, um, this Proctor 25 for as well. So when you are ready to, to test, you do your intake, and I know our agencies do them differently. Um, sorry about that. Okay. Um, so SL will be a little different from ABE, ASE. You can go ahead um, and do your intake the way you usually do. However, it's good to keep in mind that you should not be doing intake in the same room at the same time that you're doing testing. Um, whispering and um, talking about uh, doing the demographic form and that sort of thing. If there's any way that you can do that separately, you should because it can interfere with the accuracy of the test. So, and then we have the progress for post-testing. Um, keep all of your, uh, let's see. Okay. <laughs> so, um, the screen we had before, this is one session. Free test and it has everything, the loadicator, everything. The progress Post test, this yeah. is from the e test um, paper. Um, it is a session that allows you to do just put in the same uh, ID for the student. We'll talk a little bit about ID in a minute. Um, put in the exact same ID and it will automatically show you the next test you should be doing for that. Um, if you're doing paper or pencil, you will have to go to the chair. The teacher administration or the testing administration manual, and it has a chart, and it will show you which test you need to get next. The same thing with the appraisal; it'll tell you what pre-test to get. If you're doing e-test, that's done for you. But that test administration manual will tell you after you've done the appraisal for math goals or the appraisal for reading goals. It will tell you which reading or math test to get. The e-test is done for you. Do you create a separate template for post-testing? You, there is a separate. You don't have to create it. That is one of the things that CASAs will do. They will give you a progress post-test template, and that's already designed for you to take the uh, to put the student in. And when you, uh, you select that, the proctor will. If you're doing post-testing, then that's what the test. So the proctor will select. And then you will go in and add your station. The student will put in their ID, and what will show up to them is the test that they need to take next. Now, it will show if you've done the pre test of both math and reading, then it will show both tests. If you only want them to take one, you will need to indicate just take math, don't take reading, or vice versa. But you do not have to set up that. Um, it's best, it's the most seamless to have CASAS e-test doing the work for you. You can set up separate post-test templates if you have a, a reason for that. But uh, generally, this is the best way. Um, just a reminder that CASAS testing, and they, uh, they have researched this pretty exhaustively that students make progress 
on average between 70 and 100 hours of instruction. Now, our uh, they will allow and our state allows us to test at 40 hours, but that is not best practice. There needs to be a reason for that, like the student is leaving or there's a good chance that they won't um, stay long enough to test, uh, do a post-test. But regularly post-testing at 40 hours is not good best practice and, and COPPA does discourage that. Another uh, session that you have is a retake, retest, same day only. What if your uh, potential student tests out of range? You can use their test ID and activate this session, and they can immediately retest. Um, and it will be clear as soon as they finish testing that they are either a conservative estimate, which is a diamond, we'll talk about that in a minute, and or completely out of range. A pretest means to retest them if they are a conservative estimate or out of range. Um, so if that if you if they have time on the same day and you're able to do that, then you would access that session. If they if you are a paper pencil, then you're going to have to look at the TAM and decide which test to give them according to how they did on that test and give them that either that same day or whenever you're able. Um, if it's not the same day, then there's a not the same day session. So we can use that as a test and putting in their ID, it will uh, keep all of the information so you're only testing on the one that you need. Okay, um, they say don't delete any of the records, just leave it in, in Top Pro Enterprise. Just leave those records there if they are out of range. And then you just read up to them. Um, if you, uh, this is probably good to, to mention, when you do the, the uh, locator with the e-test on either math or reading or ESL listening or license reading, um, you do not use a license for that, only the test. So the locator doesn't use up a license, and so that's good. But if you have to retest, that will require another license. Okay. Um, so this has to kind of be ready with the tests that you want to the proctors to give. Um, you can see on the screen that you can we you've got this name lab question mark question mark question mark appraisal in there you can uh, rename that to be whatever you like. Uh, so that doctors can more easily go to the test that they need. Um, we haven't really changed that that much because we haven't had the need, but it's certainly something you can do if you feel that it's not working out. You can put the lab name, you can put an acronym for your site, whatever. But this is where the proctor will go to start a test. Can you test at different times on the same day? Yeah, so. The sessions um, can be opened up for up to four hours, um, and you can test within that four-hour period. Um, if it's the same student, are you talking about the same student testing on the same day? Yes, they can if it is out of range. Does that answer the question? And you can do it anytime. You just if the session. You no, to no, be sure no. the session doesn't expire, so because everybody's test stops, so make sure you, I open it for the total amount. But if I'm testing in the morning and then I've got a testing uh, in the afternoon, I just have to reopen that and um, add my station to that. It doesn't matter any time, all day long, all night, if you want. But just keep in mind that will expire at some point. We don't want that to happen in the middle of student testing. We can go and reconnect them all and reopen the session, but that is not very fun. Does that answer the question? 
Yes, that answered the question. Okay. Um, as you're looking at your templates, uh, if you're in charge of, of setting up templates, you've got your templates from CASA, go through those carefully um, and make sure everything is the way you want it to be. Um, one of the things that um, you can do process is kind of iffy on what in fact actually I think they never mind they took that out of reading goals I think it's just available in ESL so we'll just leave that they found that that hasn't been as helpful so I'll just you can also um, set up filters so that if you have a large agency and you only have one site or you can get to those quickly so you can see that filter by and it's you can put in different filters so that you get if you've got pages and pages of testing sessions, um, you can filter it. Okay. Um, yeah, you don't have to rechange these year after year. They're just ready to go. Um, with Cabe, you know, we had lots of sessions and started a new session with a new group, and that's not really necessary. Um, for enterprises where all of the data is immediately um, uploaded. So you're, this is, this is when I showed you earlier, we have Cost Pro Enterprise on one side and we have Cost of e test on the other. That's basically where you're giving tests. There is some test results there, but most of your data is going to be over on Cost Pro Enterprise. So you don't need to be setting up lots and lots of sessions for this new group or that new group. No. You just go to the pre-test session and enter your station. You go to the progress or post-test session and you enter your station. You go to the practice and enter your station. Um, and so you don't have to be setting up lots of new sessions. It should be a pretty clean page. Okay, so make sure um, you might run out of stations, for example, if you have a pre-test and you're testing a lot of people at the same time and you uh, have a one processor, it, it may, that 25 stations may not allow you to enter anymore. Uh, if that's the case, you, you might want to set up a second session. Copy it, create it in the, in the, um, at the template and copy that in. Um, and so that you can open a new session if you or if you're or if you are testing um, different overlapping verbs. Okay. I, I put it in a special place. Well Okay. So um, that might be a time when you'd want to have maybe two uh, test session one, two test test session two. Especially if you have an agency overlap testing and you have a, a different proctor in a different room, and that may be useful. And you'll find these things out as you actually are running the test. Okay, so um, conducting the trial run, uh, we did not do this. Um, uh, I didn't even think of it, uh, but it is, it, I wish we had. We, we did have teachers go through and take the test to kind of see what they look like and see what it looks like to, to log on and so forth, but you can do a trial run in your lab, in your site, and you can contact uh, CASAS and say, okay, we want to, to do a trial run. We're going to need this many licenses for practicing implementing this test. And they will credit you those licenses. So you don't have to use your own licenses to practice running a test session. Um, so I recommend that you, you do that. There are things that just reading about it, seeing it on paper, uh, are awkward when you're actually doing it. Um, if you're doing, if you're new to ESL, you've got to make sure that, that the headphones are enabled on whatever computer you're using. And once you get into the test, it's difficult to you can't just go out, right? It's secure. So you can't just go out. You have to disconnect the test in order to 
uh, take care of something in the background. So you want to be sure those things are done ahead of time. So a trial run really helps you to figure out what your issues are and give CASAs uh, support you to help you with those. So recommend doing that. The other thing you can do is just use a, a practice session. Um, but I recommend doing a real one and you, having CASAs credit you the licenses that you need. And then if you do one and you see that, wow, we're going to have to do this again with another site, then I recommend you do that. And now let me just kind of show you. Oh, no, not quite yet. All right. Um, okay, so you've got to set up the lab for testing. This is uh, something that CASAS doesn't really show. I put this one in. This is what has to happen before you can ever have a student come in to test, you've already got your station set up. And this is on the day of the test or the hour of the test. You've got to open up all your computers. Okay, so first of all, um, your, the proctor is going to log into their session, um, log into e-test so that they're ready to go with their session. Start those sessions. And then, you're going to say, okay, this is just pre-testing, so you select that. Then you've got to start up all your computers that you're going to use. And um, you don't have to do that first. You can just add your stations. If you know which ones you're going to use, after you select the testing session, you've got to go in and manually enter all of those stations that you're going to be using. Um, then you, you can start each computer. Uh, I'll show you in a minute when you um, start the first test. It allows you to save it, and then you can click on that in the future. And I'll show you in just a minute how that looks. But you're going to start it. You're going to go to the e-test website, the global URL. You've got a bookmark. You're going to click right on that, and you are going to get a screen that shows that it's ready for testing. If you've added your station, it will have a little box that shows you that the student can now enter their ID. Um, so then you've got to have all those set up. Now the students come in. You help them go to their correct testing station and enter their ID. And if this is the first time they've ever tested, they will be entering the data that you have designated. Remember, for our agency, it's last name, middle name, first name. Um, Male, female, and you can add whatever you like. And then the students, uh, you'll have to click to confirm the site, um, and students may not know what to do. And to save the data is another thing that has to happen. And the students may be able to do that, or you may have to, to circulate and make sure that they've done that. And then they will get the screen that shows them uh, a reading passage of what they need to do to confirm the site. So here's what it looks like. When you go to this URL, that's on the website I'll show you. Um, and bookmark it. So you're going to take putting that in. Uh, you know, if you just got one little thing wrong, it's going to uh, slow you down. And this is what the screen looks like. So if you're setting up for a proctor station, you're going to go ahead and sign in right here and that's what's going to open up those pages I've shown you of the different sessions and the proctor will select the sessions that he or she wants to start and start adding stations to those. Um, you may only have to do one if it's free post test. You may only have to do one if it's a progress test and everybody's on reading those progress test. If you have a mix or uh, then you may have to open more than one station. The other thing that, that can happen when you get the screen is you can click on take a test. And uh, that will um, save, give you a, an exact file that you can save to your computer. Now, you can do that 100 times, and you've got millions of these saved to your computer. Or you can take that first one where it says save and save it to the desktop. And it will show you an icon. Uh, so here we are. So you can, uh, it's going to.
save this file and see, I've already got a copy. There's one copy right there. <laughs> you can have 25 copies and, and plug up your computer. Or you can just save it to the desktop initially. And then when you need another test, you just click on the icon right here. So I've got this saved to my desktop. I've got Tops Pro Enterprise loaded and I can get into that. That is not, Tops Pro Enterprise is not what we use to administer the test. So here, this is for the student station. Um, uh, Doris, yes. how do we get the login information to register the computers? Okay, so that is going to come um, when you go live and you email them. You've done all of the, the four or five steps in advance that you need to do. You email classes. They're going to give you your, your number and uh, the, the um, URL that you're supposed to use, which is the same as this one. Um, pretty much everyone that's outside of big, big states uses this one. Uh, and then you will be able to start setting up your station. And uh, there is, a, I'll show you at the end where you can get it step by step. You don't have to try to remember from this uh, whether or not, how, how you're supposed to set those up. It has a step by step to help you do that. Um, so this is what we recommend that you bookmark this to your desktop of the stations that you're using for testing. And then you just click on that and it will take you to a screen that if you've added the station, the software has added the station, the student can then put in their ID. If that still hasn't happened, it will say refresh, and you can uh, have the student click on that when it's ready to go. Is that clear? This will save you grundles of time on testing day or testing hour. Okay. So then, um, yes, it's daunting. Not just a bit daunting, it's daunting. And if you haven't done a, a, a trial run, it could be even more daunting. But it can have, it, it will, after a time or two, you'll get much better at it. One thing I really like is there is a dashboard for the proctor that can see how many tests uh, what test the student is on? Are they on the locator? On the on which reading goals or which math goals test are they there on? Um, it also tells you how many minutes or what number they are on the test. And so this is a good way to track that. Um, you can have it on a PC or you can have it on a walk around. Definitely uh, send the test and. Uh, just so that you can fix an issue and then reconnect it. So um, it is daunting, but it can, it can work. So here's the tech support number. Uh, well, website, and they do get back to you quite quickly if you need them. So if you're testing at night, you're kind of, um, or, uh, you know, give it a specific time. So keep that in mind. Um, we haven't run into any insurmountable problems in our night testing that we needed support to do, um, especially since we've had to practice a little bit ahead of time. But. Okay. So then, once you the student finishes, immediately as it, as it is scored and they see the score. Um, there is a place where you can edit what they see, but it shows a, a grid, uh, um, a vertical grid, which tells where they are, what their scale score is, because raw score is something we don't share with students ever, ever, ever. It doesn't mean anything, and it, 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 I know they ask, well, how many do I get wrong? And they say, um, let me give you the scale score. This is what your level is. How many got wrong? This is not a pass-fail test. You can't fail this test. So that's not really important. You don't give that information to them because it, it, it's not valuable 
plus they may be comparing with each other. It doesn't really make any sense. So stick with the scale, giving the scale score. And just broken disc, if they keep asking, oh, well, I'm going to give you your level now. That's not important. Dorita, so, um, is there any help for um, any tech support for evening? Is there are some. There's no not. The, the tech support isn't available evening. So you need to do your trial runs during the day. But I have done a lot of, of evening testing and I have not run into anything that I couldn't fix myself. If some, for some reason, um, we did have to, we did have a problem once where we had to abort a test which is, it's no score, it just stops. There's no, it doesn't keep any data. That's only happened once, and then we, we reinitiated the test, and that works out all right. So if you're, if you're only testing at night, try to do your rule, your trial run on a night before the students get there, and contact cost of support if you're having issues um, during the day, the next morning, the next day. Have to have it. You're, you're not going to run into a lot of problems, but if you haven't done a trial run and your first time is at night, you really are going to be on your own on that. So you might want to just do something ahead. So um, everything you can look at results. So, so back to the report, you will see a report that shows the student their scale score. And where they level, um, it will not tell their NRS level, um, but you can get a report that shows that for them. So they'll see that. If you want to print it, you can print it and get it to them or keep that for yourself. But everything um, is automatically uploaded into Top Pro. And that's where you can print out the reports that you're going to put in the student file and help to enter your data into OPS. Um, that student score report, you can give to the student, you can give to the teacher. It gives a description of what the student is able to do in math or reading or ESL. Um, and it's good for the student to have an idea of where they are. And then it's good for the teachers to know. Sometimes we'll just print two, one for the teacher, one for the student, and one for the file for grade. Um, and that helps the, the teacher to be able to guide instruction. And the, the lovely thing about Top Pro is you can get reports for uh, specific things that they need to work on. Like case, um, if you're doing paper pencil, you do have the option to use CASA's answer sheet. If you use CASA's answer sheet, um, then you can use that information um, through a scanner to Top Pro, and it will also generate reports. So that might be something you want to look into doing. You pay for each sheet, they're about 50 cents a sheet, but um, you're saving it a lot of money by just doing paper or pencil over the years. So that might be a good way to get the reports that you test, um, that it's providing you test get. Um, and we can see um, Also, teachers are given permission to look at, can be given permission to look at Top Pro, and they can see, go back and see several different reports for each student. Okay, so let's see a lot of this. Um, now, this assumes that you have. Demonstrate the sample items. They can look at those sample items themselves when they start the test, or you can demonstrate them if you have the paper pencil. You can have everybody who's on, say, the 905 uh, at the same time, which is not really the real world. But if you have a situation like that, you can go through the sample items together and Help them to know what those look like. You can do any discussion you want with sample items, with practice items. Um, so this also costs, and I'll show you this, e 
and paper pencil sample items that you can print out, you can use in class, um, you can project. Uh, the e-test sample items are exactly like the e-test, so they can practice ahead of time on those. If you wanted to demonstrate them in an orientation, you could do that so that you can better know how to use it. And I'll show you that again at the end and look at that, at the PowerPoint. Um, so that is a really good um, option to do. Um, intake is different if you're doing ABE, ASD, if you can see that they're a literacy level, uh, by, if they're not able to fill out their um, uh, I mean, demographic then you, you can see you may have a literacy student. You're, you don't need to have them go through taking the appraisal. Uh, with ABE, ASE, that doesn't happen as much. It does happen sometimes, and, and you can decide to give them to level A. A. Uh, math only has the two, but for reading, if, you, if it looks like you have a problem. Um, if you're doing ESL, um, then you're going to have a different intake process and not have students take appraisal if they're very low. And in fact, if they're very, very, very low literacy, um, they may not even have to take the lowest literacy test without some prior instruction, and that's okay with classes. So also you may need to identify students who need accommodations in your intake. Uh, you prepare for the test. Uh, if you're doing e test you do the computers. I think this is all stuff you've looked at if you've taken the training. You can provide scratch paper for your math students. Um, not for reading, not for ESL testing. Um, if you want to get a piece of cardstock to help paper pencil testing in ESL so they stay on the same, you know, they move down. You can do that. Um, you per if if you are doing paper pencil, you can provide calculators, basic calculators, not scientific calculators. Um, one thing that CASAS re recommends is this is a standardized test, so your calculators need to be the same student to student, so that the test is standard. So doesn't matter which one you use; um, they don't care. But it ought to be the same calculator type for every student that's taking that test at that time. Another question. Um, Will we yes. be covering late level gains and possible changes to the ABE level? Ask that again, I didn't hear. Will we be covering level gains and possible changes to the ABE levels? Um, not in this one. There are there are changes. The ABE reading um, NRS levels have changed to be up to um, level one goes up to 203, I believe. And so and then level two is a little different, level three is a little different, but you can find that also on the website so that you will know um, what the changes are. So it used to be lower in the 190s, now it's over 200, and so it will take more to get a level gain um, on the reading. And then it up in level four and five and six, it's about the same. It's, it's, it's about the same, but that first level has gone higher. So they have to go higher to get a level gain. But we will not be covering that in depth. We can do that on a subsequent training that we have in August. If we get questions and if we need more, we can do that. Um, shred your scratch paper from the math test if you do that. Okay. Um, this stuff I think everyone knows. Now, if you look down at the fifth on this, this is very important to make sure is clear as you're beginning the testing. If you need to write it, on a whiteboard if your students are testing at different times, um, starting at different times, and so you're not doing a general um, orientation to the test. 
guessing should not happen. Um, guessing, especially on the locator or appraisal, can place a student too high if they guess uh, randomly and it's correct. They can be in too high of a test. If they guess on uh, the pre-test, either math or reading, it's not going to be an accurate score. So they need to be shown, if a lot of ESL students, when they need to show this, they need to, to know that skipping is A-OK. -okay. And um, they may need to note that if they're on a paper pencil so that they don't get off in the number. But be sure that you uh, indicate to students at the beginning of the test, do not guess. Guessing will not get you into the right class placement. It will not show what you need to work on to improve your skills. Um, and with locators and appraisals, it could put you in a, a test that's really too high for you. So make sure that that's very clear. I think the rest um, people are aware of. Reese? Yes. What slide number are you on? You haven't been switching, have you? Because we're still on slide 42 here. Oh, I switched. 47. Oh, yeah. We haven't seen anything since then. Let's go out. And, um, <laughs> okay, let's see. Can you see now? Yes, I see you scrolling through. Your okay, so let's see. Um, we, you, boy, that's a lot. So here, here is the sample items I talked about. Um, calculators we talked about. It's not a lot of information. Beginning the test. Guessing is in this one. So I think we're we're on again. Yeah. Back to that mode. Okay, does everybody see that? Yes, thank you. Yay, okay. All right, during the test, you can circulate around. These are all things that you've seen in your page training and in process training that you've already done. Now, number three um, is something that's different from case. And you may have noticed this in the training. But at the end of the time, if a student is still working on a problem, you can allow them to finish. And on the e-test, it will say, your time has expired. Do you want to finish this item? And they can say yes or no. If you're doing paper pencil, you can say, okay, you just finish that item and then you need to stop. So that is something that's a little bit different from tape. Um, okay, so... Generally, students are not allowed to stop on paper pencil for sure, but generally students are not allowed to stop testing and continue at another time if you have an emergency situation, such as we had a student get sick <laughs> and they had gone in quite a ways on that test. And so we, we disconnected that test, suspended that test, and you'll be able to see how to do that on the proctor station and then they came back the next day when they were better and they finished it. You can see this is a best practice because they could go back and review. Oh yeah, I had that at the end of, of every uh, e test there is a screen that shows the questions that they have answered and they can go back and review any of those that they like. So stopping a test in the middle and and starting it again at another time should only be an emergency situation. However, it is possible for emergencies. They can pause the test if they need to use the restroom urgently. Um, but again, do your best to keep um, the security protocols in place. Um, so here is, the, you might need to interrupt the test. If the circumstance compromised test security or integrity, the test should be aborted. And that leaves it so that everything is gone that they have done and they would have to take the ultimate test. So say they, they were taking 905, they would need to take 906 at that point. 
Um, and also there is a special step-by-step -step on how to interrupt the test, which I'll show you. Okay. Okay, so this is it for e-test. Um, this is the protocol. You've got to exit the testing station and to make sure that all of the, the tests are exited on the station and the session. The proctor will exit the section. Um, remove, remove your stations if you're going to be using them again. If that, uh, that day it can be a mess later. Um, I'm pretty sure that if you just exit at the end of the day and a new day starts, that those stations will not stay in the session, but I can't be 100% sure on that. Um, so you want to remove your testing stations and exit out of everything. Pick up the scratch paper, shred it, make sure all the computers that have been exited out of as well. Um, if you're taking paper pencil, make sure you have uh, your numbered test booklets. They should be numbered. Make sure you have them all. And that, um, again, any paper has been shredded. So that's pretty general. Um, and then you can go to Tops Pro Enterprise immediately and get any reports that you, that you are eligible for. Basic reports have fewer than the NPM. Um, this might be a place to mention in the report there, they usually have two. So they'll have um, the student pro profile, individual profile, and they'll have the student individual uh, student summary. And the summary, is it has the summary listed on the test and talks for enterprise. That is a report for everyone. Um, either in the class if you have the enhanced or everyone taking, say, 905. It would tell everyone's test. And you can look and see how everyone did in past titles. So summary means class for everyone taking that test that you select. You can select a group. You can select um, just uh, a class number or anything like that to get a summary of all the students you want to compare. And then um, individual is the just Is Cover working on randomizing their questions? I don't don't know that I can ask. Okay. Because it someone said it's a big deal for now, they, in the prison. They, they probably they are not doing that. I know what they are not doing uh, with the reading goals and the, and the math goals test is they are not doing test adaptive where um, you you start like on the locator that it'll start adapting. They do not do that anymore. Um, they found that it ran into problems with accuracy um, on the locator and some other. So they're, they're not doing any test adaptive um, on these latest Still does that with the reading uh, for life and work for Excel. Um, so I don't think they're listening to this. I don't know if that's where that came from, but I can ask if they're going to randomize. I doubt it. But you should you can you should not be giving the same test more than twice in a twelve times a year. So say you have a nine to five, and then they take. Uh, four months later, they take 906, and then two months later, you give them 905. In that, in that school year, you cannot give 905 again. You've done it twice. You've done 905. You just got to go higher or lower. So it, they shouldn't be memorizing the test. Uh, it's just giving them. But I will ask that question. Okay. The guidelines, um, you can review the practice questions with individually with a student or with a group if that works out. Um, try to give the optimum uh, 
atmosphere for the test. Um, and you can provide paper, scratch paper only for math. They cannot have paper for any of the others than six notes. You can't, of course, read any questions. They can't translate. They can't use their cell phone. I think that's pretty common knowledge. Um, this I'm going to go over fairly quickly. It's mostly geared towards ESL. And um, most people are, are, that are new to CASAS testing are reading goals and math goals. I'll be happy to direct you to ESL intake uh, individually if that's necessary. So we've talked about this before. If you see that someone is a very low level, they don't need to take the locator. Um, this is, we're talking about ABE, ASE, ESL, there are ways to find out where they are and whether they should just take the A test or whether they need to take the locator or appraisal if you're doing um, the piece of pencil. Um, and part of that is intake, filling out their form. Um, how, did, how are they doing on that? Um, but with ABE, ASE, did you run into some literacy, but it's not as much um, as with ESL. And of course, screen, screening needs to happen before the test. Um, okay. This is for ESL primarily, um, so I'm going to just skip over that uh, unless there's someone who you have a number of people that really need to see this. There are other places that we can show this. That's okay. Um, and I'll be happy to give advice about the oral writing and reading screening that's available for ESL, which includes these questions and how we handle those. Um, one thing I will say, if you are screening for ESL and you ask these questions, they need to be asked in a natural pace, not what your name or what country are you from. It, it needs to be what country are you from. How long have you been in the United States? So keep that in mind. Make sure that you're not being extra nice because that will not help you in your screening process. And again, this is message for ESL. You might find this valuable, however, for ABE and ASE. Um, go to the second bullet. Why do you want to study here? And it may help you for placement purposes or for um, hearing their, um, uh, the instruction that you're going to be giving them, even for ABE and ASE. We actually ask a more in-depth question to see just kind of what their writing skills are and to get an idea of where we need to start with them. Um, and if you have a big program, this is a good way to also help you play them. This is for literacy students at ESL. Um, I'll just say in here, in case we have ESL uh, administrators, uh, test administrators, if it's so, so difficult that they cannot even answer these. And these are now available on the website. You can copy them and have them available. You don't have to use up your 27 form to, to do it. Um, anyway, um, if they can't even do any of this, then you would probably need to just note on their file they are unable to test. Their literacy level is too low. Give them the lowest score possible on Utopia, which is like 176, 175. And then after they've had some instruction, go ahead and give them the literacy. Um, if they're having some difficulty, you can give them literacy. Um, if they're having some um, difficulty, don't give it to them. If they're having Difficulty, and it looks like they're level A, do that. They're having some difficulty, give them the yes, they go. Little or no difficult, give them the, the results they go. 
Okay. Um, yeah, sorry, yeah, that too. Okay, testing accommodations. If you run into those, go to the website. Um, they accommodations aren't just for everybody. They are also uh, you have to have formal um, diagnoses or indicators that they have to have an SCOP or IEP. So make sure that that you're following that. And um, the only accommodations that they will give um, are again uh, extended time, um, getting supervised breaks, providing an interpreter for directions only, uh, the time in which the testing in the alternate room. So it's not a, a huge number of accommodations. All right, let me chop. Okay, so here is an example of the e-test. They can click on the calculator and use that. If they're not comfortable with that, you can provide calculator. We talked about that. But make sure that you're everybody's doing the same one so that it's standard. Um, uh, the locator does have a couple of practice items. And before they actually get into it, this is the paper pencil or e -cuff. Um, You can give them however much time you feel like with that uh, because the timing doesn't start on the e -cuff and you wouldn't start your timing on the paper test until the practice is done. And then remember, tell them not to do the stuff, but not to spend too much time on anyone. Don't guess. And here's another thing on the locator. If they can't answer any more questions, it's just too hard because the locator or the appraisal, they're both designed to start very simple and to get gradually more difficult. If they, are, they can't answer any more questions, they can stop. They don't have to keep suffering. So they don't have to keep going in. They will, you can tell from the appraisal or the locator which test. To put them in. Okay, so in the e test, it's scored automatically and it automatically just gives them their test. And as you do a trial run, you'll be able to see that happen if you're doing the appraisal and you're doing paper pencil. You need to go to your TAM, your appraisal test administration manual, and it will tell you which test give them and be sure that you're timing that carefully um, because if they get extra time they may be opposing to guys so be sure you're timing that very well. I do believe that with the appraisal they can finish them on their own as long as it doesn't take time. Um, and yeah you don't have to play extra for that. Okay raw scores, skill scores, natural scores, e test will Calculate through the raw score and the skill score. You're going to see that. Um, but the tester will not. Okay, so the score report that I tell you shows up. Not to show that. So the raw score is just a number correct on the test. And then you convert that to a scale score. And that's when you start making comparisons. Please don't do any comparisons with raw scores. Um, that should should not be happening um, between your comparing or students comparing each other. Um, and then you're going to report that. So if you have an, here's an example of a, a chart from the TAM on ABCR. And here are the test items. And you can see that the inaccurate scores are at the bottom where they couldn't answer more than two to three questions. That requires a retest, either for post or pre-testing. This other range is accurate, and you can go on your merry way. If you get a conservative estimate up here at the top, these, these are very conservative. They are probably not this high. Um, then you, if it's a pretest, you need to retest on that. 
you would want to do that too because your base is going to be too high and you're not going to get the level gain from that base. Sometimes that'll slip through with us and we've once or twice we've not caught it. Maybe we've had a lot of people testing and the test got approved. So um, it was the stay at 204 and the student accurate score was 193. Well we've just we've just um, made it so that we cannot get a level gain on that student in the level five. So you do want to retest those conservative estimates for funding purposes and for the student's ability to see what we must work on. Um, Post-testing, however, you, uh, CASAS allows for conservative estimates. So say you give them the, the test that that e-test gave you to give on the post-test or you went into your TAM and it said to give um, 9.05 and they were at a conservative estimate in that test, you can use that for reporting purposes um, in the yes, and for um, calculating the record gain. Here are, this is just good to know, um, we use these on our certificates but these are the descriptors of what students can do, um, and those are available on the website. It's too small for you to read. Um, and there's ESL listening, ESL reading, there's ABE math, ABE reading, and it's good to look at those. And it's also good for reporting to students what their skills are. And like I said, if you do a certificate system, you can put that right on the system. Um, but be sure you've got the right modality so you're not giving them a, a level descriptor for math when it's reading or listening when it's reading. I think we've talked about that. Be sure that teachers are in the loop. And I think the hardest one is making sure the students are in the loop. Um, we often get the information back to our teachers, but the teachers get the information to the students work on. So putting in place sort of a couple of strategies that teachers know will just help with, with the instruction and the quality of the program. Okay, so post testing, we we're pretty we dictate uh, that's dictated to us or or um we have Utopia, and it does correspond to the topic, um, and you can do that in, in, in groups, so individual topic, all the way back your agency. Um, level gain, um, if you look at the bottom of the screen, according to process research, which is confirmed and confirmed up here, is the average gain, level gain for students comes between 70 in 100 hours, and that gain is five points. So it's not a level gain, but five point gain. Um, if you have someone that's right on the border, then they'll probably get the level gain. But you can look at about five points in the scale score as a, an average gain. Be careful. When you're doing that, that's automatically test every 40 hours unless you feel you're not going to be able to instruct them further. This is um, an example of the next assigned test report. Lovely. Um, right now we don't really have that with Utopia. So you, if you are entering, if you're doing a paper pencil at the jail and, and they're using the scannable sheet, you can get this report as you enter that stuff in the top pro. Um, if you're using eCast, you can see this is a uh, report. It shows the dates they tested. Um, it tells their scale score and their raw score, what tests they took. Um, here are all ESL tests. And it can um, tell you which test to get next. So we've got Melinda. And um, she's out of range. Well, not out of range, but she is 
at a conservative estimate on a pretest there, so she needs to take 186. I probably would give her 83R. She'd probably be in range on that one. But you can go by these forms, um, and that will help you to know which test to give next. If you're going to do the listing for Melinda, you know that when you test next time, you need to give the, the 981L or whatever it is you're doing with the 81L. So that's a lovely report that's available for top, in top. So. Look at that. Uh, the date class is only available if you're doing from here. But the date, form, the last four, etc. Um, I think we need to do that. So what do you do? need to do the post testing? Great. If you're using eTest, then you just put in the same ID. And this is something that your agency needs to talk about. What is your ID going to be? Um, we don't get our utility ID until after all the data is entered. It's entered usually all the testing is done at that point. So you need to come up with an ID that is uniform and not easily duplicated so that you don't know uh, students that they might be. I have two I, questions. Yes. The first is, could you tell us once again which training modules need to be done ASAP? That's before you log off. And then the other one is, is this available in paper testing? Which? What's available in paper testing? That report? I am assuming it was the report. This report. Um, if, yes. Yes, the if test report. You, if, um, if you are using Tops Pro Enterprise by using Compass's um, answer sheet, so you purchase their answer sheet and the students bubble all the answers in, and then you enter that data into Tops Pro. Uh, then you can get reports like this. Um, if not, you will just have to look at, at Utopia. When you to Utopia, you see the last test they took. Then you go to your test administration manual and you find which test to get them next. So Utopia, uh, Utopia has a, a lot of this information right on the student screen. Um, and they do have that test history report that has everything for the last six years on it and you can look at that one um and i do believe that tells yeah it tells what this information as well but you will have to go to the tam to find the next test so and then the the other question is where which modules do you need to finish in order to start testing is that the question? Well, it's yes. She said yes. <laughs> okay. So um, let me just get out of here and I can show you really quickly what that looks like. You're just going to go right up to the front. All right. So now, right now, um, and in a few weeks, this is what that implementation training is going to look like. Right now, you've got basic implementation training. You have to take that. You have to take your, your agency personnel who are ready to test. They need to take the proctor test, uh, proctor training and or coordinating training, coordination training. So we're going to coordinate. We need to do that and take the proctor. So that has to be done. You have to have also, um, if you're doing e-tests, you need to have the basic implementation training. Let's go down to this other one really quickly. Okay, I can find out. We looked at that earlier. <clears throat> okay, here it is. Okay, so 
Oh, no, 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 Okay, so this is what you have to have. Okay, so you have to have, if you're doing e test, you have to have those two, the module one and two, or if you're doing it right now, basic implementation. You've got to have the new agency online implementation agreement, and that's done by one person in the agency, the director usually does that. And you need to have everyone who's coordinating an upcoming test or proctoring, they have to have those certifications. And both the state and CASAS will want to see those certificates um, that's auditable. So those have to happen um, before you can even purchase. Okay. So, does that answer the question? Well, she's responding to that. There's another question is, are you going to show how to do paper tests? And she said, yes, I did answer that question. Okay. But, are you going to, but are you going to show how to do paper tests? I can, I can do that. There is module three implementation training. It's all about um, paper tests. And you can go through that and certify that. Um, I will tell you quite frankly that um, you, you follow the basic implementation training that tells also about uh, paper tests, but you learn it by doing it. So everything that you need to know to keep test security and protocol, the timing, all of that is in that basic implementation training, which we can look at in just a minute. But you um, and you can do that training, and, but you are really going to learn. I trained. And I went to test and I felt like I hadn't been trained. You, you just have to do it. It's like playing a game. You get the directions, everybody reads the instructions, and you don't even know what to do for each other thing. So it's kind of like that. And if you need more, then uh, if you have more questions, um, I can show you where you can go to get those answered by CASAS training. Um, I can help if you need, but a lot of it you'll be able to explore on your own and then by doing it. Let's go back to um, I think we were here. We're almost done with this. Um, so we were talking about the ID. Make sure you come up with an ID um, because before we get our utopia number, which would work great. And you can actually um, have that imported, utopia numbers imported in or change them to utopia number after. And process tech support will help you with that. You have a big group, they'll, they'll help you do that. Um, but you need to have something that, that you use every time. So we do first initial, last name, birthday. Um, and then it needs to be exactly the same format. If you're doing a birthday and you use spaces or dashes, it's not going to take you to that student. And if you if you don't use the same ID, you are not going to be able to use that automated process in e-test where you can get on um, and put them in the progress test. They put in their ID and it automatically puts them in it. If you have different IDs, you're going to have to manually put them in a test, and that requires a lot of extra work. So, recommend that you work on getting um, an ID that you think will work well for your agency, and then it has to be exact. You know they haven't put it in correctly if you're doing a progress test, and it comes up and says, What's your name? And you have to, they have to type in their name. You know they haven't put that in correctly. If it comes up and says, are you Melinda Ocosta? Then they put it in correctly. They say yes. And that helps with duplication too. Is that 
up. They put in it in correctly, but it happens to be one of the um, IDs that you have that says, "Are you in Costa?" And it will say, "Well, the is then they say no, and you have to work on getting to the right unit. It's the same with e test. You jump in, and that's when you find what your issues are. Okay. All right. Not really, because we didn't do the formal here. You should um, be finished with that. So let's go over to process website. So here's the home page. Um, it's pretty much process www.process.org. And you can find all kinds of information here. Um, training support is my best friend, so I can go there. And here we have uh, e-test help online, um, top pro enterprise help, the online training. Um, some of you have wrestled with this animal. This is where you go to actually register for the training. So um, you're going to do this is the one that they have up right now, process implementation. Some of you will be very familiar with this. So here's the basic. Here's that implementation agreement that you have to do. Um, if you go back and find the proctor, et cetera. So you click on this, and this is kind of a roundabout way. You click on this. And you want to do, here's your all your training. Coordinator, proctor, basic. This one is your first go-to. Until we get these modules up, which should be in a soon. Then you go over here. Um, here's the implementation agreement, which the director needs to do. Then you go over here and you click on one more. You have to log in. And then um, you enroll in this workshop, which I don't really want to do, but you've got to go clear back to enroll in this workshop. Um, they also give the, op uh, the option to enroll in more than one workshop. If you have trouble with this process, then you can contact here um, online oh, no, no, no. training, this one training at classes.org and they will get you into the training. So let's see, let's go back. So we're here and we're going to go to e-test online help. And here's where that handy dandy e-test sampler is. So you can have, you can do this in a lab, you can do this in a class and project it. Here are samples of all these tests that they are currently. So this is the new muscles and the new reading. Um, this is the listening and this is the ESL reading. So we can go into this one. It, it looks just like it looks on the screen. Here's the directions. And then it has practice and they can try that out yay I'm correct etc um, if you do it incorrectly it's going to tell you oops try again etc so you can do these with the students and um, and then they're about uh, so they can so back to practice, this is exactly how it looks on the e -class. And they can go ahead and do it. There's probably about seven, tells you seven items. So this is wonderful for um, to be able to access. So, okay, and you can do this with every level. And it just takes one, you could do it in orientation if you want, um, just to get an accurate score. You can do it 
um, before you know, close test, just so that they know how to do it and kind of what what they're looking for, um, uh, what the test looks like with, with the whole class with, with instruction and signage. So that's another really great thing to have. Um, and then here are all the help. You can download all these intake, um, ready to go live, step by step help, ease for test day, test interruption, um, listening practice, um, top pro, the basics, how you generate reports, um, how you scan your, your sheets in if you're doing the paper pencil. Um, data management for your data manager, um, administrator information, um, and then teacher information, and stuff for California. And then down here is information on just getting things up and going, um, steps to register your stations, how to replicate sessions, how to add and manage users. Um, verbal instructions, if you're giving that as a whole group, steps for testing day, monitoring your licenses. So um, this is a great place to go. And if you cannot get what you need, then you go to talk support. And you can call them. Or you can email them. They get back to you really fast. Um, they're very, very helpful. Um, I asked a lot of questions that I think they thought were very interesting or not. <sighs> what a dumb question. But you feel dumb sometimes when you start this. And they were really so helpful. And, and So I think that's it. That's all I have. Are there any questions? Hello? Nothing's coming through yet. Okay, so we've got all our questions answered. One certificate. Yeah. Okay, great. If you have questions, feel free to to email me. I'll the classes will be more timely and they'll be really you can, the question is, can we use e-tests in the jail? There is, um, they are in the process of creating standalone so, so that you can use them with Rachel. If you're doing Rachel, those are not quite ready, but they anticipate by the end of the year, those will be available. So then you will be able to do e-tests in the jails if you have Rachel. Um, but currently you're going to have to use pencil. You can use on the scanning and then use top stroke. Oh, my email is Therese, oh, D, dog, Barry, S C E R R Y at D S email dot net. I'll put it here on the chat. So that's my email. Put it in the chat. Yes, but um, Rachel, Rachel is the is the um, non-internet interface for jails and prisons. I guess someone answered that. Yeah. So if you're using that non-internet interface. Um, you can, in the future, near future, those will be available to use in that kind of a system. Okay, who can my contact to confirm what supplies I need to order for my program for paper pencil? Once you've done the training, you can um, call or email classes, and um, they will be able to help you with that. Um, the catalog is right online, so you can look at what supplies they are and what the materials come in, so if you're doing reading goals, 
our map goes, you can see the packets that those come in. Um, so look at their online catalog. You can contact them at any time, and they will just they will ask you what's your program like, what are you doing, testing are you doing, and they'll help you. Um, okay, to, yes, you, if you're ordering paper pencil, you have to show that you are, have done all of the training that's required for paper pencil, and then they will set you up as an agency. And you cannot order unless someone in your agency has gone through that process. So it has to happen first. Um, Top Pro Basic. Um, has fewer reports. So that's basically the difference. You can't, and also in Top Pro, you can't set up classes, separate classes. So it is limiting. Um, I, uh, if you can afford it, it might be worth it. Um, just because you can look at your whole class, set up uh, a class and say, okay, so this class is testing um, and you see the specific reports. But you can do a summary of the same modality, test modality, say 905 or 903, um, and, and get that um, in every one that you select. You can select uh, that as a filter, or you can uh, check on top. So which of the 903 people you want to look at, you can select just your class. Um, if you have your own site, that's easier. Um, and then you can get a summary. So there are advantages. We just have the basics because Utopia does a lot of that. Any others? It looks like that's it. I think we got them all. Oh, the slides, yeah. We'll, we'll get you those as soon as we can. I think. And my pleasure. I'm happy to help if. Okay, is that everybody? I think so, yeah, no one's commenting. So yeah, I will email the slides, the link to the recording, and your contact information to everyone. Okay, and I will I will check the process today and see if I can go ahead and how soon I can get this module since it's a new, new module. Um, we gave them out at Summer Institute, so it's probably okay. So I just need to make sure it's done. Okay. We'll get that to you as soon as possible. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.